you know, I'm very happy to be a person to, you know, present in front of such a learned person in forest. And, uh, and especially on this practical step to uh, improve the forest genetic resources. It, no, so happened, my gen, not my doctorate 40 years back in genetics. And uh, we are, I'm today going to talk to you on the large scale cultivation, not the regular small forest cultivation. Can you also improve the forest additionally and industrial application of bamboo resources. When you say large scale cultivation today, it's happening with the Forest Development Corporation, Maharashtra. All these FDC and they need to do that. I'm Dr. Bharati, I did my PhD in agriculture, and then now I'm trying to work more into the forestry side, and more particularly bamboo, and we are part of Bamboo Society of India. I'm a government council member, and I, I uh, Bamboo is, uh, uh, society is able to really push the bamboo knowledge information to everybody, and please, all of you can look at the option to join, because bamboo is a wonder plant. A plant that can grow one and a half feet a day, and it's from India. That's the beauty of it. And we have the largest area in the world, largest area. We're not promoting the bamboo. The kiwi fruit from uh, from Australia, from New Zealand, they promote very bad, very much. Uh, 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 ginseng from Korea is getting promoted. Uh, bamboo, bamboo from India is not getting promoted. Of course, we have not done enough work. We are not able to do that. Now, I've just recorded the bamboo grow for one full day, 24 hours. And I saw them growing one and a half feet. This is the video of that. I started 6 o'clock in the evening. Bamboo is growing in the night. I put the camera continuously. It is recording it. You see them again daytime. 12 o'clock, it is grown here. 3 o'clock, it's come to this place. It's growing. By 6 o'clock in the evening, it reached almost one and a half feet. And they continue. Continue till it goes to 30, 40, 50 feet. Oh my God, this when I saw 15 years back, I dropped all my experiments and, and the production in, in 80 different species of plant. I stopped everything. Believe me, I totally better to bamboo today and working with the bamboo and bamboo is so much of knowledge, so much of information. But what is happening in the forest today? It's like this. We have 0.5 tons per acre per year while in the forest. We have a large quantity of bamboo. It needs to be improved. That's a different story. But when farmer is taking it out and cultivating it, you are able to get around four to eight tons per acre. Excellent jump. Point five to four is almost around eight times to ten times. But when we do a precision farming, a broiler chicken growing in the bamboo, the bamboo become precision farming leads to forty tons per acre. Forty ton. It's only a entry point. If you are able to do good with the correct climate. With the irrigation, with the right input, it can go 60 by 70 ton. The genetic potential is 100 tons per acre. 100 tons. That is the potential of this. We need not do anything for this. What I did simply went for the genetic population, looked at which is superior clone, collected it, tissue cultured it, developed the methodology of cultivation agronomy, and looked at the industry who's available. That's all the simple story is. But then what happens in the nature? The bamboo sits ideally one year, two years, it is not growing, it's forming the rhizome, and it's not really growing. And third year it grows a little bit, fourth year it goes to a taller plant, and the fifth year is ready for harvest. That's conventional. What is done today is to make a plant to grow in two years itself. Yes, bamboo is ready for harvest in third year. Again, a harvest in fourth year, harvest in fifth year, continues to grow. That is the modern cultivation. Let me also talk about this, how the modern cultivation is. And for, to increase the bamboo productivity, you need to really manage the plantation. Like we know how to manage sugar cane. We know how to grow banana. We know how to grow our rice. But they don't give money. My PhD is in rice. 7,000 rupees profit per acre per year. That water, one acre paddy water is sufficient for four to five acre of bamboo. And you can convert them into four to five lakh rupees. That is the beauty. Whatever I'm saying, it's all there practically happening. So to have a better productivity, first, we need to grow bamboo as a single row, grow a crop like sugar cane. I've been working in sugar cane for the last 40 years, doing tissue culture, doing cultivation, to factories, and today we replicated sugar cane technology to bamboo technology to grow them in a, in a row crop instead of individual trees. And then they look like this. From the aerial shot, when you see that, you'll see like a Sugar cane feed. No, this is all bamboo feed. Bamboo aerial picture of the bamboo. They have come in a row and the roads are there. 
and you convert them into various products. Yes, you can convert the laptop, insistry, structures, and towel, and you know, so many things are there. I, I, in fact, I have all the product here. Textile, cotton, only 500 kilogram cotton per acre per year. A bamboo, a bima bamboo can give you 10,000 kilogram cotton per acre per year. Karnataka is doing this. Karnataka, North Karnataka, there is a factory called uh, in Koka. They are doing bed sheet. They are doing turkey devil out of bamboo, to bamboo and they are exporting it. But unfortunately, the cotton is coming from China. We are not, we are not industrially pushed ourselves. We are not pushed ourselves. We, we import even an insisting. Simple insisting we import it. Now, I'll be talking to more on to you on the energy side. Bamboo can convert it into a huge market. Huge market, which switching over the energy from the fossil fuel to the bamboo fuel. Yes, you can make coal replacement. Cement industries are using it. You can make bio CNG gas. Pune is doing for the last three years. There is a bank running. And in Bangalore, Shell company has developed a technology 15 years back. And they have the knowledge to convert bamboo into or any myomass into through a process called IH2 into diesel, petrol, or aeronautic fuel. Electricity, one kilo of bamboo is able to make one kilowatt current and also charcoal. That means it's a carbon negative project, not carbon neutral project. Solar is a carbon neutral. Wind is a carbon neutral. Biomass through gasification is a carbon negative technology because it forms charcoal. Right. And bioethanol. There is a factory already coming up in, uh, come up in, uh, with the Bharat Petroleum in Numaliga in Assam. They're trying to convert four kilos of bamboo into one liter, 1.2 liter ethanol. Yes, all these are need huge quantity of bamboo. It's not available in India. Even simple incense stick is not available. Right? Let's look at how do we do this 40 tons to get per acre per year. First, you should have a best bamboo species. Eucalyptus has got some 20 to 25 species. Whereas when it comes to bamboo, there are several genera. Several species put together over 1,200 to 1,300 species. Uh, what is popular now in India around 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 80 to 90, out of which are cultivable around 20 species. Now, for every purpose, you should have different species. Insistic bamboo is different, and energy bamboo is different. Furniture bamboo is different, and if you go to Konkan, there is another bamboo called Stocksy, different bamboo. So different different species are there. Within the species, there is no. Selection done, no varieties available, no clones available. <clears throat> so when you look at the within the species, a lot of variability because highly segregating population, all are open pollinated, half seeds and full seeds. So they, they, they are segregated badly and there are a lot of variations except for a few species like Bulgaris. Now, then the propagation method, you can do three seeds. Yes, once in uh, 20, 30 years, the seeds are formed, but then the variability. Time taken to mature it is very high. Vegetative propagation, numbers are not sufficient. Tissue culture is the best method available in India. For banana, they used so many times. So many millions is getting propagated. Sugarcane is done. Bamboo is also another, another product. And it's doing wonderfully very well with the bamboo tissue culture. And uh, agriculture practice is totally missing. A lot of people say they, they, they developed. But you know, really, when you look at it, there, there's still there is a huge gap between what is required as compared to what is uh, available today. Best agriculture practice is missing today. And planting them. We still follow British method of planting 160 plants per acre. Even NPM, National Power Mission, recommends only 160 plants. I'm supplying those plants to Maharashtra. Uh, you, know, you know, this, this week alone, I'm supplying around five and a half lakh plants planted at a space of 200 or 160 plants per acre. But then plantation can then be done with 500 plants. Plantation can also be done with 1,000 plants. Yes. Then the bamboo yield can be higher and faster. Then irrigation. You should irrigate with the drip and then fatigation. Because the growth rate is so much, the yield is so much, they also they remove the nutrient, which should be supplemented. Now, why it's not become popular? Of the many reasons, one is bamboo is thorny. The bamboos are bamboos is a culprit, <clears throat> which has got a lot of thorns and which has got uh, hibernate the snakes inside and, uh, and, and difficult to harvest. Whereas there are many, many bamboo, which are thornless bamboo and no, non-flowering bamboo. They don't die. All that kind of bamboo available in the population. So I went through one species called bamboo of Balkova, worked for 15 years, developed a clone called Bhima bamboo, and that has got a thick wall. And it's got very fast. And this is the thickness difference between the, the, the Bhima bamboo and the regular bamboo. 
So to multiply this in a large scale, you need to have a, a best method of propagation. Today, tissue culture is the best method where you can make one plant into one million plant. This is the tissue culture uh, methodology, original plant. In fact, I started my knowledge, everything from the Boris department, from KFRA. I, I initially taken it up and, and taken it to the laboratory. And in the lab, it was it was sterilized, and and then it is multiplied uh, in the test tube after sterilization. It, within three weeks time, they start germinating. No rules, only the shoots come. Then it is multiplied to clone in five months time. Then it is multiplied to large scale in fifteen months time. Then one plant will become ten lakh plant. All these ten lakhs is removed uh, into, into individual plant for, for the routing, and it is done in a line function. Please believe me, it's no more done as a laboratory like one or two plants. This is all done like a, a car assembly in Ashokal Island or a bike assembly in a TV's company at Bajaj. Continuous people sitting, they do one lakh every day. Largest lab in the world you see here in India. And plants are kept in a growth room. They are, multi, they are they're kept in multiple layer and it's it's kept for three weeks and again proper brought back for transfer and then again again subculture and finally in after 16 months the full roots are developed the plants are looking like this and then taken to the greenhouse and nicely hardened and after hardening two months they are little tiny plants like this these are the plant exported to over 20 different countries and almost all the northeastern state the plant goes like this it's going from here to Arunachal Pradesh, Mizoram, Meghalaya, Assam, everywhere it's going. And for other places, the plants have grown to bigger size and put in a lorry, it is transported, it's grown for three months like this into a, a big polybag plant and they're fully hardened. Now they are from the lab, they are almost six to seven months old, ready to go to the main field, right? And uh, there are many species in which it is done. The tissue culture work is done in ba Balkova, in Tulda for incense stick making, Newtons for construction and the uh, and the biomass purpose, Stoxy for a special furniture from Konkan area, and uh, Asper for dental columbus Asper for making shoots, bamboo shoots, sweet shoots for export as well as domestic consumption, and the timber bamboo. Hamiltoni, again a fodder bamboo for animal, and the timber bamboo. Thyrostoxy salivary for a very, very, very special furnitures, and then and the fishing rod or pole wall jumping, all, all that this olivera is used, and palida for handicraft. And brand is again for shoots as well as for, for a structural purpose. Latiforus is a big bamboo like a tender climate junctions. I can keep on telling the species all almost another another five more species available in tissue culture. These are available by not only by me, by many people together. I'll just show you a video for you to break the monotony. The Bima bamboo is an excellent bamboo for which the National Bamboo Mission supported 15 years back. And bamboo has been cultivated in India for thousands of years. However, the practice of plantation, raised for commercial reasons, has a relatively recent origin. Robor Biotech, Hosur, a biotechnology-based laboratory, with its experience spanning two decades, has developed commercial protocols for Belkua and Newtons, and is now producing close to 6 million plants in a year. Their plants are pre-hardened and superior hence grow faster and harden quicker in the greenhouse. The industry that has been standing anxiously at the brink of growth is now confident of taking a step further because it knows that the plants are blooming all over the country and are just a call away from the factories. Right, so coming to the next one, like in you know, agriculture practice and high density plantation, it was planted by a government institution, one of the corporate sugar sugar mill, planted in 2010 to check up all this true or not. I developed the bamboo in 2005 itself, but it took some five years for people to understand. And, you know, almost 10, 11 years back, it was planted by an IAS officer and in a, in a, in a, as an energy plantation to check up the yield. And then that led to this growth like this in the 12 months. Just 12 months. My people are visiting. And uh, you see, I superimpose a person to know the height. One person, two person, three person height in the boat. That's a growth of the bamboo. Bamboo doesn't sit for ideal for, for uh, you know, for over years and then start growing. Now, how, what is done? The land is level. Lines are marked for 10 feet or 12 feet or whatever the distance we are planting according to the planting density. And in this case, it's a 10, it's a 10 feet row spacing. So the plants are planted in a continuous trench. So trenching is made first. 
and that is filled with organic menu of cow dung and sheep dung or a cocoa peat or uh, or press mint from the sugar factory and all that. So it was planted. We put inside the bottom six inches, and the uh, at a distance of twelve feet between two rows. Then it is covered with the JCP with the topsoil. After covering the topsoil, then every four feet, bamboo is planted at four feet, and at, at, the, at the, the manure and the fertilizer, the white color is the fertilizer. After checking the soil for its pH easy and the nutrient availability, and plants are given the recommended dose of NPK, urea, DAP, and potash, all mixed together as a given as a basal fertilizer, and plants are uh, put in a row. And then the drip irrigation is laid. This one is done in a dry area like Bangalore. This is a 35 acres of uh, uh, Infosys. You see them how this planted, and it is getting planted. And after that, the drip irrigation is provided. So I'll come to that uh, picture of that continue the picture before that. Many will ask you what is the water consumption? The water consumption for bamboo to get 40 tons per acre is to 2,000 millimeter. If you have only 1000 millimeter, it will come to it fall down to 20 tons. If you if you have only the rainfall of 700 millimeter, then you fall down to 10 tons. So water requirement daily is 5.5 millimeter or 20 liter per plant per day. Now, if you if, if you have excess water, you can irrigate the water like this, or you can put a drip irrigation, that's the best one. And along with the drip irrigation, we also should put a bit fertigation tank. The fertigation tank, the fertilizer tank, will have can be used for giving supplying the fertilizer to the plant. So this is how the layout is done. The plants are planted, and the plant in two months looks like this. This is in Bangalore. I turn the camera to show you the tall feed gap. This is just two months. Nothing is happening. Plants are trying to establish in the new soil, new environment. The roots are just swelling, and the new shoots are forming. Now, in two more months, four months time. The plants start growing, pushing up. In this time, they're going and touching the menu what you put in the bottom now. So then they take a line. Now the bamboo is growing like a wall above. Now in four plus four, eight months, bamboo grows to this height. And the gap of 12 feet slowly getting reduced to two feet. And the leaf size has become bigger. And in another four months, which is four, four plus eight, 12 months, completely covered. You cannot see any light coming down. The bamboo is capturing all the sunlight because of which it grows, and you see them, the stumps, which are formed now. The culms are there, and all the culms are formed here, and then they store story, the, the energy, what is coming, that's what we're going to use it later. So if there is an 8 feet, 12 feet, 8 feet, 12 feet row, all are completely covered with the light. No light is wasted anywhere. This doesn't happen with any plant. This is what the, the when, when you grow bamboo, bamboo grows like a broiler chicken. They grow so fast. And this is the full growth of the bamboo. In this particular sugar mill, they planted left side, they planted the bamboo. The right side, they planted the eucalyptus. And they saw the difference was very, very, very different. Now, you might be saying, like, you know, there's a lot of technique, technology and all that, not much. Bamboo is a highly adapted plant. It's like a cockroach. Yes, it's like a cockroach. It is evolved highly, almost one million year back. In the fossil, also bamboo is a fossil, bamboo. Human beings are not human beings. Cockroach is cockroach. So. Even a small farmer, a shirtless person is a farmer. All these people are from uh, South Africa. They visited in 2013 in Spain, and after seeing he growing so much, they went back, they recommend the government. The government is given the permission to grow the bamboo in a very big way. I'll come to that later. Now, bamboo is harvested easily. The lungi person is able to pull out the bamboo. In a thorny bamboo, is very difficult. You cannot pull out like this. And after that, they clean the branches, and then the bamboo is ready to available. In the forest department, yes, you all been told by everybody that the bamboo should be harvested only three years over or a four years over bamboo. You cannot harvest a smaller one. Correct. It is correct for the purpose. It is not because of the plant. But everybody says it's because the plant cannot take it. So here yeah, the bamboo is harvested completely. If you're giving for energy, if you're giving for ethanol, if you're giving for uh, including paper, you can give the bamboo at any age. They have, uh, they are suitable. In that case, you can do a complete mechanical harvest. And when you harvest completely, they look like this. This we started doing in 2007 and 8. And even today it is getting harvested and they are coming back. The same bush in two weeks time. The same bush in four weeks time. The same bush in six weeks time. 
you see the caretaker of the farm, even the, before the branches got cleaned and then the leaves are not removed, no water is given, irrigation is not done, but still the plant is growing because 30 percent of the bamboo is below the ground. From there they come out. And once they come out properly, then in two years time, it's again ready for complete harvest. In this case, when you do a complete harvest, bamboo is harvested completely every once in two years. Instead of 40 ton, you get 80 tons per acre, which means 40 average, annual average will be 40 tons. Now, cut bamboo for industrial application, they chip it immediately. This is the chipping of bamboo done uh, around, uh, around 12 years back in a farmer's field in front of the collector and the DFO, everybody. You can see them, the entire bamboo. And this is the raw material for the industry. The drying is faster. This practice to collect the bamboo from the farmer's field. Now, when you grow the bamboo, what happens? A lot of space in between left without anything. And uh, especially when you're planting only 160 plants per acre. So in that case, you should not leave the bamboo with no intercrop. We should plant some intercrop. This is the beans planted along with the bamboo and it's able to increase the nitrogen. Uh, microclimatic conditions improved. Bamboo is growing very well. And uh, this is with, with uh, the local beans. And this is with a cowpea. All the, these are fixing the nitrogen into the ground. This is bamboos of bamboos. This is the bamboos of balcova. So you can see them, the difference in the growth. They grow, they shoot up fast, they come out. Bamboos of bamboos are highly adapted, but grow, start slowly. And this is the cowpea. 18 months old plant, and whatever gap available, cowpea has been planted. And in three months of cowpea, they're able to form a very good canopy. And also, it gives a nitrogen back to the soil and the yield to the farmer. This is mustard with the balcoa bamboo. This is turmeric with the balcoa bamboo. This is uh, soybean with the bamboo. You can grow everything. You can grow bottle gourd. You can grow uh, you know, um, chickpea. You can grow uh, green grams. You can grow even, um, you know, tur, watermelon, or even a wheat. This is a wheat plant in MP. And uh, bamboo and wheat can do very well. In fact, when you grow this, wheat also increases. Bamboo also, bamboo also grows better because they're a companion plant. Now, I can keep on talking about this banana, bamboo, so many things, uh, sugarcane, so many things is grown along with the bamboo. Now, coming back to this, when the bamboo is growing so fast, it is estimated that they are removing something like 2,341 kg of nitrogen per hectare every year. And 220 kg of uh, phosphorus is removed. 2,600 kg of potassium is removed. So all put together, if you convert them into annual basis, it is 440, 480 kg of uh, nutrients are depleted from the soil. The moment when you substitute, the growth continues. Otherwise, the growth doesn't continue further. So that is the reason we say we always we should give the fertilizer to the plant. Now, even the forest, if you are able to do that, it can be rejuvenated, but we cannot do that. Fertilizer cannot be applied. Instead, we can go for organic manure vermi compost can be applied now as a manual when you apply vermi compost you need to give in the beginning two baskets then vermi compost should be one kg in the top two kg in the second year or and about that the fertilizer to be applied to the plant is uh, you need to give urea dap and mop for uh, murata potash should be given and uh, it should be at the rate of first year second year third year they slowly increase the concentration so that as the plant grows, the demand increases. Ultimately, it should be stopped at, at the level of 700, 200, 800 kg of urea, DAP, and MOP. But all these dosage to be corrected based on the soil test. If the soil has got good amount of nutrient, then that particular nutrient should be reduced and given to the plant. So uh, we also assist the farmers uh, to in, in calculating this. Right. This is one side is a technology. The other side is the money. At what price one can cultivate bamboo? Unless survey something is economically viable, nobody is going to do it. And uh, we calculate, when you calculate for a thousand plants per acre, where the harvest starts in two and a half years' time, you have two years of investment here, which amounts to planting material, cultivation, labor cost, duplication, one lakh rupee for the first year, 30,000 for the second year. This is per acre cost. Now, taking this further for the 10 years, First year we invested 100,000, 
30,000 second year, 35,000, 35,000, 35,000 continuously for every year up to 10 years. There is no yield for the first two years. Third year, it starts with a less yield of 30 tons. Then it stabilizes at 35. Then finally, it remains at 40, 40, 40 tons. Totally 305 tons of bamboo. This is the bamboo which we are repeating. This is one of the average yield we are giving it. This is to calculate how much is the per ton cost. Now, I told you 305 tons of bamboo is available 10 years time, for which our total expenditure is 410,000, which is 4,10,000 rupees. Uh, divide this by this is 1,344. Firewood price is 4,000 rupees today. And this has got an energy value of something like 4,000 kilocalorie, excellent for uh, for firing because very low level of ash content. Even if it is given as firewood price, bamboo is able to give you a return of 1 lakh rupee per acre per year. That no crop can give you. Rice, sugar can give 35,000 rupees profit per acre per year. Rice gives 7,000 to 10,000 rupees profit per, a, per acre per year. Cotton gives you 40,000 rupees. You have to replant all that. This bamboo need not be replanted. You will be able to give 1 lakh climate resilient, less labor, you could be absent landlord, and non-perishable. Very important is non-perishable, anytime you can harvest, if you've got any work. And it can grow anywhere. That's another beauty. It, it is a sodic soil. In the sodic soil, which the pH is something like, you know, 9.5 to 10, after one year, you see the growth of the bamboo and how it is improved. Well, we want to show you how it is done. This is done in a farmer's field where uh, is, he calls this Wamsi Garden. This is uh, in a Thirukovilu, which is near Thiruvannamalai, Vilipuram district in Tamil Nadu. The farmer has planted the bamboo and taken a pit like this. When the soil is removed and thrown, you see them completely calcareous soil. Nothing grows in this. And what we did, we brought the soil from outside for only for the pits, like a starter and this tube light. This starter could help the bamboo. This is mixed with the fly ash. It mixed with uh, 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 this um, uh, cocoa peat powder, and then it is planted with the drip irrigation. You can see them the bad soil outside. The plant which is planted with a different soil is here. There, this is the uh, fertigation system provided for the plant, and fertilizers were never applied in the top like this. It is only mixed with the water and is given, and special fertilizer because acid releasing fertilizers are given. Now, the growth of the plant in two months' time. The owner of the farm is standing next to that. And you can see them close up look of that. And in five months' time, the bad soil is there. The red soil, what is put in which the bamboo is able to grow, grown to this height and produce a little bit of leaves falling here, there, and all that. This fallen leaf slowly increases the organic carbon, increases the humic acid while decay, decaying and improves the soil. And that results in improvement and the grass start coming back. This is 10 months old plant. The same owner is walking through, and you can see them the growth. Wherever the leaf is fallen, it is started growing. Wherever the leaf is not fallen, it is not grown. It's empty. So the 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 slow change in the soil structure takes place. When I visited the bamboo after a year, I saw the bamboo, the growth. There's such a lovely green color bamboos come, and the roots started penetrating through the bad soil also, and the bamboo started adapting to this. This is uh, wheat. Uh, this is the bamboo leaves which are which are plowed every time every three months and it's able to go inside and in 18 months time you see them the weeds are not coming but the leaves keep falling the fallen leaves keeps on changing the soil in three years time the soil becomes so fertile that you know one portion of the play field bamboo is removed and you could plant another crop and see the crop is able to grow while growing that the bamboo is doing a wonderful job of cleaning the carbon dioxide called carbon sequestration the main problem of global warming is, is the carbon sequestration, carbon emission, carbon emission from petrol, one liter petrol converted to 2.2 kilograms of carbon dioxide, or a coal of ton of coal is burned to make one megawatt electricity. All that are doing emission, our global warming temperature is increasing. Now, bamboo is producing 40 tons of wood, four tons of leaves, and six tons of rhizomes and roots, totally 50 tons per acre. It is producing it now. That has got a carbon content of 23 ton of carbon, which is 48%. Now, this carbon has come from carbon dioxide of 84 tons from the atmosphere. The 84 ton of atmosphere carbon dioxide has got oxygen, which is not taken by the body, released out, which is 61 ton per acre. What is 61 ton? 
it is 210 persons breath, the breathing requirement for human being. So one acre can at any time up to 210 percent, the oxygen is still saturated. That is what is coming today as a oxygen park in many places. This is a, in Mangalore, in Karnataka, on the coastal side. It is there. This, is a, this photograph as old as uh, more than uh, 15 years old. And 15 years old, this is in Bangalore. All the foreigners are coming and having food, everything. But look at this. Our Indians are not visible because we don't realize this. But whereas in Delhi, this is an oxygen bar. We know coffee bar, other bars, and now oxygen parallel bars are there. And the way they say, you can go breathe fresh air, oxygen, complete oxygen. Yeah, all these are available in the market now. One by one, it's coming to different cities because our concentration of oxygen should have been around 20.9% 20, 20 in the atmosphere at the sea level. As you go up, for example, Bangalore is 900 meters above the sea level. It has got only 18%. If you go to Delhi, much more lesser. And if you go to Himalaya, very low. So all that could be is reducing one side. So in the market, like a bacillary water, people started selling auction cylinders. Do you know the price? 500 rupees, 6 liter. Carefully read it, 6 liter, 500 rupees. Whereas one bamboo gives you 600 liter oxygen every day. Oh my God. We don't connect the numbers. And when you, when the water came to India, we never believed that, you know, this little water is going to be a, a commodity. Today, everywhere, every car, every potty shop has got this. Now, bamboo is only the next material because every bamboo, one bamboo produces, uh, you know, it takes 600 liters of oxygen it produces. That's what I said. This is six liter cane and 500 rupees. So one bamboo able to not only produce oxygen, it is cooling. It's got such a huge amount of leaf surface area and it is doing 12,000 BTU per hour, which is one ton of air conditioning load. But since it's outside, nobody believes it, nobody understands. But when you go next to the bamboo plant, yes, it is very cool. But you calculate, this is what we should do now. Scientifically, we should uh, validate for every species. It absorbs 6,000 liters of sewage water, sufficient for one house if they got two plants, no sewage water will go away. And if you make Bangalore with 40,000 acres of bamboo, the 720 million liter of water coming every day will not go to the Kaveri River. It will be absorbed by the bamboo. Yes, we have 1 lakh acre as a green belt for Bangalore. You need to have only 40% 40, 40 of the area to grow bamboo. They will take away all the sewage water and it can produce 200 megawatt of electricity. Coming back to the carbon dioxide, 450 kilograms of carbon dioxide sucks every year, one tree, and releases 320 kg of oxygen, sufficient for one human being. One human being needs only 280 kilogram oxygen, sir. So this is the beauty of bamboo. Now that's the reason the oxygen park has got higher level of oxygen. Today I have a couple of oxygen meters. We go keep checking the oxygen meter. I've checked it up in Chennai. This is a video of that, what I've done. In Chennai, in OMR Road, we made an auction park before the auction park, the auction park. The gentleman is holding the auction meter. 14.4%. It should have been 19, 20.9%. Can you believe this? This is what's happening. And we never checked. And it's not coming in the net. It's not coming in the TV. No news. This is the fact. Now, what I did, I in front of Gromo, I have bamboo. I have a lot of bamboo in the, in the factories. And I put this meter next to a bamboo. Inside the bamboo, same meter. And checked it up. What is the number is coming? Please watch this. The meter is hanging in the tree. 35%. Oh my God, it's saturated with oxygen. And what happens? One, every person by breathing in, breathing out, we release one kilogram carbon dioxide every day. One kg of carbon dioxide. Okay. That means if you put enough number of plants in the house, it will be able to do that. And one plant is capturing 0.36 gram of carbon dioxide, which means you need 2,777 plants per person in a house, in a garden, to make or take all your sakya carbon dioxide. But if you are able to plant bamboo, 
Only one plant is sufficient. That is the beauty of bamboo. See, you know, it's a plant evolved in India. There are a lot of bamboos available in China, but we, we do have, we are the largest people in the world, bamboo is available, but we should use effectively for that particular purpose in the hospital, in the colleges, in the roadside, make a carbon neutral road, and at the home or and in the office area, make the place saturated with oxygen. Due to Corona today, what is happening is our level of oxygen demand for people who are affected by Corona is more. Lung size is reduced. Though they escape the Corona, but then what happens? The lung size is reduced. That needs more. Let's look at other way around. What is a carbon footprint? One human being carbon footprint in the India, the world, if you see, Qatar has got 37 tons of carbon dioxide per person per year. UAE is 23 tons. US is 15 tons. Switzerland is 4.7 tons. Whole world is 4.79 tons. India is only 1.9 tons. Though we are fifth largest emitter of in the world, our population is very high. So that means you we, we can grow bamboo as a, a carbon sequestering, carbon farming can be done. And we need to plant very less number of bamboo. I'll come to the number. It's only five bamboo per person to be planted. But because bamboo has got 58 to 40, 48 to 52% carbon in the body, whatever it produces, whether a leaf or stem or a cull or a rhizome, the roots, it's got 48 to 52% carbon come from the air. This is what I said. I just clicked this uh, one. And uh, this also I said that today the, this bamboo is going to Sri Lanka. And this one entire newspaper, this is, it's not an advertisement. It is their own article on the Bhima bamboo almost around seven years back. And zoom it. Bhima bamboo for clean air. There are many countries that are doing it now. Sri Lanka is doing it. Africa, South Africa is doing it. Philippines is doing it. But we, we tried first with uh, our own Infosys in, in Bangalore. They have a meditation center. In the 1st of January 2013, they gave a challenge saying that, you, you, uh, the challenge saying that, can you make this place green in one year's time? We planted the bamboo there. Please see that. This is what is going to happen. This is a complete barren land. And Plants are pits are made and then filled with the manure. Plants are planted on the 1st of January. Every manager of Infosys was asked to plant around 70, 80 plants surrounding the place, and they all keep planting on. And you see them on the 1st of January, nothing happened. It's all there. Staking is done, tied together. Just four months, nine days, May 9th, it touched the roof, touched the windowsill. And the VP saw this. He said, why Bharati, you won't call only one row? Why didn't you put one more row? By the time we could do it, the bamboo in the first row has grown beyond this. Started hiding the root now. And you see them in, in 10 months time. Our general manager, Mr. Pani Salam, is standing next to that. And you see them, the bamboo rows. The, the building is totally hidden. The roof is seen here in the gap. This is in Bangalore, in Sarjapura. And the oxygen was tested. This is their manager. Is our manager. You see the height of the bamboo in 1st of January 2014. 13 is started, 14. 12 months, exactly, precisely 12 months. After seeing this, they gave 34 acres to grow bamboo as a, as a carbon farming. We did it. And by planting this bamboo, the corridor is saturated with oxygen, temperature is reduced, and oxygen reach place. This is what happens in the meditation center. Then we made this 35 acres of carbon farm in Bangalore to reduce the carbon footprint of the company. Not for money, not for making anything, to claim the company carbon neutral. And they need to do around four to 5,000 acres to make the entire company carbon neutral. We are taking one step more. We made the auction park in Sirseri, the Sirpot uh, in Chennai. At the industrial area, a lot of emission is there, and the Bhima bamboo based auction park is established. You see them. This is the aerial photo of the, uh, sorry, this is the Google photo of the, of the location, and now it is looking like this. Earlier it was like this. Now we cleared and we put the layout, and I'll show you what is the layout of this. We make a layout according to the place. This is the layout, original place, you know, dumping yard, water stagnating area, all that. So on the side, it is done, and at the time of inspection, this is all looking like this, uh, filled up with the soil. In a matter of around 20 days, it's filled up, and the uh, compound was done. The managing director came, and we made a layout, and the layout was paved with the payment. After the payment is made, 
the soil is brought for the, uh, the spots where we planted with a better soil and it was uh, in the month of March. And March end, it is getting planted and the planting starting 23rd on, on 25th, complete plantation is done and it is looking shabby like this. You see them, all the pipes are there and then bags are there, all that is going on. And in a matter of one month's time, after staking is done, not one month, in two weeks time, they started establishing. And then it was also being a Chennai, uh, you know, it needs uh, some of the protection against uh, wheat, heat and all that. So we also planted, this is uh, exactly after a month's time from the planting, data planting. Started growing and light support for the people to walk even during the night time. Nothing has happened, this growth is just taking place. Now in a matter of, uh, um, you see the growth, the, this original bamboo plant, height which is kept. Now the new shoot which has come started growing to that height. This is in two months from the time of planting. The growth was 12 feet. At the time of planting, we planted six foot tall plant. And the next shoots which came started growing like this. These are happening. Somebody next to Bank, Bank Chennai, they can go visit this area. This is the two, three days back photograph what is taken now. And you see the original plant height and the new plant height. And this growth is in five months time. And you see the person who's standing there. From him, from him also, you can make out that it is able to touch 18 feet. That's a growth at which it's like a broiler chicken, the bamboo is getting grown. And the same uh, part next to the office, you see them, it is it is crossing, you know, one floor and second floor, it is crossing the second floor height. And that is the height of the bamboo. This is now, latest one, yesterday, two, three days back photographs taken. So this is called Sipcot Sipsteri Oxen Park. On the national, on the, on the highway, they have put this and it is there in the IT industry. And this like of things are going to come in many, many places in the days to come. In this same place, in one year's time, it's going to grow like this. In one and a half year's time, it's going to grow like this. This is what happen, going to happen as an oxygen tunnel. When people, old people, or people infected by corona, when they walk through, the concentration of oxygen is going to be at least 30%. They can breathe much more, lesser oxygen. Number of breaths will come down. They won't pan, and they'll be able to saturate in 10 to 15 months' time. You don't need to pay, like what I saw you in, in Delhi, that amount of oxygen uh, money need not be paid. Bamboo, I spoke about the environment. Toothpick. Toothpick bamboo is sold at 10 lakh rupees a ton. I said 4,000 rupees a ton for biomass. We all buy this box, a small box like this for 25 rupees. It's 25 grams. And 25 grams is one gram is one rupee. One kilo is 1,000 rupees. One ton is 10 lakh rupees. We are buying it. And insisting, similarly. Now we have nice keyboards. I have in the office. My, my keyboards are all bamboo keyboard, mouses, uh, this one. Cycle is made. It replaces the steel. And not only that, it also replaces the longer structure, the wind blade. Because bamboo is lighter than steel, stronger than steel. Seven times stronger than steel. So the fiber is removed and they are able to reinforce into this and they are able to make even windmill blade. Now there is a company working with me from Denmark. They are going to make a windmill tower, not with steel, with the bamboo structure. Wait for another one or two years. The design is going on. They are going to establish first in Denmark, then it's going to come to India. Now, speaker. No plastics in the top. Laptop. Mouse. Thumb drives. Dell computer body outside. Bamboo. IKEA furnitures. IKEA board. Bowl. And, and there is a huge, good uh, Hyderabad. There is a showroom. All these are coming from now China. They came to me four years back and asking, can we not make it in India? We don't have the bamboo. We don't have that kind of a bamboo what is needed. Our bamboo can be converted, but we need to really grow them in large scale. Lumber, wood, wood, excellent high density wood, 1.2 density of the wood. It doesn't float in the water. It's such a beautiful one, ready for harvest in two and a half years time or three years time, then continuously every year is available. Teak you have to wait for. You're all from the for us here, you know that how long it take, takes, mahogany takes. It's This wood is better than mahogany and blue. Not only really that, cotton from the bamboo. I told you 10,000 kilogram cotton per acre per year is come from this because bamboo has got so much of the fiber, bleach and convert to cotton and into yarn. Once a yarn is made, it's able to make the shirts and pant. And Park Avenue in India selling pant and shirt for last 13 years. 
They are selling in Bombay, in Chennai, in Bangalore. I have bought some 13 or 14 years back from Bangalore. It's available with me. It's doing very good. Different colors. Now, regular cotton is only 400 kilogram cotton per acre per year. Bamboo will give you 10,000 kilogram cotton. That's a mind-boggling technology. But even simple ensign stick, one and a half lakh tons be importing every year at a price of 1.25 lakh tons. Horrible. So much. And uh, I told you this product earlier, the bamboo is able to make electricity. 200 acres of bamboo can produce one megawatt electricity every hour, 8,000 megawatt hours in a year. 8,000 megawatt carbon negative project, one kg bamboo produces one kilowatt current at a price of two and a half rupees per unit. Cheaper than solar panel. At the same time, gives the employment for your own farmer. Solar panel is good, but it doesn't give you any income to the Indians. It's all imported. A lot of parts are imported. Your Indian farmers get some money every year, every year, year after year. And the carbon is reduced. And the temperature solar panel always increases, whereas bamboo leaf temperature never goes more than 24, 25, 26, 28 degrees centigrade. Solar panel, touch and see, it will be 50 to 60 degrees centigrade. At one side, we produce electricity. Another side, we convert the sunlight into heat. I'm not blaming that. That is also needed. This is also needed. This can help our own Indian farmers. But if you have got only small electricity of 5 kilowatt, National Bamboo Mission and Application in 2004-05, they developed the machine. You're talking 15, 16 years back. 5 kg bamboo, you put it inside, it will produce and run one Sira motor generator of 5 kilowatt. If you want more than that, 500 kilowatt uh, gasifier, this 500 kilowatt gasifier, it will be able to clean the gas. The G Genpa can produce the electricity. And this technology standardized by Indian Science Bangalore. Not now, 20 years back, 20 years back. And what you need is 200 acres of bamboo through the pyrolysis process. You will produce one megawatt every hour and 8,000 megawatt hours. And also it produces charcoal. That is the reason it is called carbon negative. This value of the charcoal, charcoal is very good. This is a highly activated carbon. And this is able to give you all the cost of cultivation of bamboo plantation. And the bamboo, the power become free for us. And this is what I told you, the South African further, they went to other fields. They saw in 3.5 years old bamboo plantation. And these are all South Africans. They went back to South Africa in Durban. They made the first national demonstration project in 2013. Go to the net, it is available. Bamboo from India. Technology for power production also from Gujarat. It went there. They are able to do that. I will show you guys one more small video for the break from monotony. Nature has a wealth of untapped energy resources. Bamboo has been recognized as a renewable source of energy. Bamboo, the fastest growing biomass, can confidently be associated with the development of energy sector in India. There are two ways in which bamboo gives energy. First, by conversion, and second, by gasification into producer gas as a source of thermal or electrical energy. Bamboo gasification is emerging as an option for electrical application. Bamboo-based gasifiers have now been commercialized and are available in capacities ranging from 10 kilowatts to 1 megawatt. Biomass is converted to energy by the reaction of the raw material with oxygen and steam. The biomass, where it reacts with oxygen and steam in a high energy combustion reaction. The technical feasibility of using bamboo in biomass gasifiers has been tested and validated by the IIS Bangalore. Like any other biomass, uh, bamboo is also an excellent fuel for gasification. Two one megawatt gasifiers have been set up at Kachor and Nagao units of Hindustan Paper Corporation in Assam and one 100 kilowatt gasifier at NPDA Nagaland. Further, nearly 20 gasifiers of ranges from 25 kilowatts to 500 kilowatts capacity have been established. Bamboo renewable energy is all set to assume the role of a catalyst in rural and industrial development of India. A national level program can fill up a new life in these exciting sectors. 
and lighted up our villages in the most natural way. It's not stopping with the electricity. Bamboo gas, syn gas, which is produced through this uh, gasifier, could be converted into oil, crude oil. Crude oil can be produced, and then the crude oil, when you produce it, you're also getting a charcoal as a byproduct, and uh, liquid charcoal and non condensable gas again can be burned. All these available. Now, this technology further refined by a shell company, I'm calling this as a patented technology, IH2 technology. And IH2 technology is able to convert four kilos of bamboo into one liter petrol. The biomass of thus any material, including bamboo, can be put into the hydropyrolysis process. And at 400 to 550 degrees centigrade, the bamboo is converted into charcoal and a gas. This biochar is collected. The gas goes through the reactor. In the reactor, it's converted into fuel of either gasoline, petrol, or a jet fuel, or a diesel, or it could be even a kerosene. All this possible. The emission is collected from there through a hydrogen plant, converted to hydrogen, and sent back again to the reactor. So beautiful one. It is. This is done in a very uh, in a in a capacity of model plantation model uh, machine of five tons per day is available. And this is getting its functioning now in Bangalore. Now, I'm not talking about any theory. It's all happening. They, they also work for 15 years, started with 1 kg model, 10 kg model, 100 kg model. Now, 5,000 kg model they have, but the commercially viable capacity is 150 tons. And for which they need large area of cultivation. Uh, you know, we are looking for people in Maharashtra or in Gujarat to start with, uh, to cultivate bamboo at least in 15,000 acres so that one plant can be placed there. The investment, everything will come from them. And it's only the land area is required. I'm sure some of the offices attending here should be able to take the message across and see that this is made available so we can make this petrol and diesel available in, in India itself. So biodiesel, when it, it was giving only 400 liter per acre, 300 liter per acre ultimately, but bamboo will give per acre per year. It's benefited, companies going to be benefited, country emission will come down. All these are superb. Really depending on your bamboo. The bamboo, you are the custodian of bamboo. You need to really push the bamboo to increase the yield to, to see that this is happening. Now, not only petrol and diesel. Today, Prime Minister is talking around 10 days back. He said 20% ethanol to be blended. But what we are doing is only 5% planting is going on now. 3% till last year. This is become 5%. We don't have the ethanol. But Brazil has gone to 80%. 80% ethanol, 15% petrol. Look at that. The blending has become petrol, not ethanol. Now, why? Because they have sugar cane. Now, bamboo does, has got a lot of lignocellulose material. And this can be converted to ethanol because of its cellulose and hemicellulose. I sent the bamboo to Italy, something like you know 2014 itself. And the Beta Renewable, a commercial company, through a Procia technology, they have checked up and found out the bamboo has got 64.8% fermentable sugar. We have to convert them into fermentable sugar and release it. And the process is like this. You take the, take the bamboo, pre-treat the bamboo. Once the pre-treatment is done with the heat and acidic condition, then automatically it is allowed for enzymes to get digested. Once they're digested, they become a cellulose to start starch to sugar. The sugar is fermented with the help of microorganisms. Within one week, it's converted. How much? 4 kg bamboo will give you 1.2 liter ethanol. One acre will give you 10,000 liter ethanol. Mind-boggling number. Sugar cane is giving only 400 liter per acre per year. Such a highly commercial crop. Bamboo is giving 10,000 liter. I'll show you in the next slide, a couple of slides. I'll show you how, how is the difference. Our president went there at that time to uh, Finland to get the technology. And Numaligar started, Bharat Petroleum. It started, now they're making 1 lakh liter capacity production. And it was signed in front of our president at that time, and it has come back. Now, this is what I was saying. Sugarcane has got molasses. Sugarcane, 40 tons of sugarcane, converted into 4 tons of sugar, and 1.5 and tons of molasses. That molasses is fermented to make ethanol. USA does not have this sugarcane. They have, they have starch from corn and wheat and potato. That is getting digested into sugar, sugar to ethanol. Right? Bamboo does not have any of this. They are only cellulose. 
and this starch is edible for human being for animal but bamboo is not except the shoots now that starch converted into starch starch into sugar sugar and ethanol this is science forget about science what is needed is is it commercially required for india viable for india to see that this is 500 liter per acre it is giving per acre per year whereas uh, maize is giving 3000 liter whereas bamboo gives you 10000 liter planting only once for 100 years bamboo need not be planted so maize to be planted three times a year sugarcane once in two three years that is the beauty of this. It can replace a highly demand record material, uh, which is a national priority, which can be done very well. If you don't want to do all this, bamboo can be converted into CNG gas. 4 kg of bamboo converted to 1 kg of CNG gas. 350 acre can run one bunk. Yes, this is the project in Pune, where this, this can supply uh, 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 gas within 24 hours. This is able to produce gas. Cleaning is done. And after cleaning, in front, they have the dispenser in Pune. He is the man who has developed it. Santosh uh, has developed the technology IIT person. Now, it's, this is opened by Honorable Minister Nitin Gadkere way back, uh, uh, four years back. It's running. It's there and it's going to be repeated in many places in India. But bamboo is the best raw material available for this, but not available sufficiently. Four kg can produce one kg bio CNG and one acre can produce 4,000 kg bio CNG gas and also electricity. Now, use so hydrogen from bamboo. Yes, bamboo can be producing hydrogen. Hydrogen fuel cell is going to work with the bamboo. This is not yet commercialized. It's in the lab scale at the moment. This is what you can see like our uh, farmers. I have a small clipping for you to. He is addressing the farmers in Nagpur in the agro vision. For some reason, the, are you able to hear me? The voice is coming out. Sir, the voice of video is not coming. Oh, I'm sorry. I think this is the maximum voice available. I will share this link to you. He speaks for half an hour without any paper. He'll be talking about what are the energy from bamboo, half an hour, and to the farmer. Is it uh, coming now, sir, by any chance? Yes, sir. I'm not done for half an hour. I'll just run for five, five minutes to show you. You can just go back to the net. You'll be able to get that. Sanfoldry, <laughs> करके किसानों के व्यवस्था भी की है और सुधीर भाव ने जो पेड़ लगाने की बात कही उसमें बड़े प्रमाण पर बापू के पेड़ भी लगाए एनवायरनमेंट के हिसाब से कारण पेड़ लगा एनवायरनमेंट की भी रक्षा हुई और दूसरी महत्वपूर्ण बात है कि किसानों को इस पैसे पैसे प्रदान की तो मैं पहले तौर पर आपको ये कहूंगा कि दो खेतों के बीच में जिसको हम मराठी में धुरा कहते हैं वो धुरे पर अगर हमने बांबू के पेड़ लगाए तो हमारे यहां पहले ट्रायल हो जाएगी एक एकड़ बांबू लगाया तो भीमा बांबू जैसे वो 200 टन और बाकी बांबू में थोड़ा कम इसकी ग्रोथ ज्यादा है ज्यादा बांबू पर कोई भी लगाएंगे तो मुझे लगता है कि एक एकर में 80 से 100 टन के कम कोई नहीं और इसलिए मैंने भी जाहिर भी किया है कि अगर किसी को बांबू पे अगर गिरायक नहीं मिलेगा तो हमारी शुगर फैक्ट्री के तरफ से हम लोग गन्ने के भाव से बांबू खरीदने के लिए तैयार हैं और हमारी रिक्वायरमेंट है करीब 2 लाख टन 2 लाख टन 
आप समझ लीजिए कम से कम बीस से पच्चीस हजार ट्रक बामू हम बामू से बिजली तैयार कर सकते हम बामू से बायो इथेनॉल बना सकते और हम बापू से अपने बायो सी एन जी बना सकते हैं हमने यहाँ देखा होगा एक ट्रैक्टर है 16 साल पुराना है और कॉटन स्ट्रॉ बीज स्ट्रॉ राइस स्ट्रॉ बगास बापू बायोमास का उपयोग करके अपने बायो सी एन जी बनाए और बायो सी एन जी पर अगर हम चलाएंगे तो कम से कम एक लाख रुपए का डीजल अगर किसान यूज कर रहा है तो एक लाख के बजाय उसका पचास परसेंट का कम से कम पचास से साठ हजार रूपए हर ट्रैक्टर वाले की साल में बचत होगी Yes, sir. I'll send a link to you so that you can see that this is what happens to bamboo chips, and uh, bamboo can be torified into a charcoal and uh, used in the uh, cement industry. Today, if you want to replace only coal in India, the market. Let's not talk about bio CNG, ethanol, all that. Eight twenty million ton we are import. You are using it in India. Out of the two hundred million ton we are importing it from foreign country. The two hundred million ton you need two hundred million ton of bamboo. The 200 million ton of bamboo, you need 50 lakh acres of cultivation. We will take another 10-15 years to reach this. That's the coal alone. And the cement factory started using it. Like Dalmay Cement is my client, Ultra Tech is my client, and JK Cement is my client. Now you see them; they are converting bamboo using bamboo in the in the cement industry to replace the coal. And because of which the carbon footprint is reducing. And uh, 600 ton is an international carbon footprint reduced to 330 now. They want to become a carbon zero by 2030. No coal at all. That is what the uh, internationally they went and told people in US that Dalmia will not use coal anymore in by 2030. That is the beauty. And for all that we need biomass, bamboo can give you the biomass. Sugar industry needs it. Sugar industry, as uh, our honourable minister was talking about it, sugar is being produced. Through other than that, sugar they are also producing electricity. Electricity gives more money. So now bamboo can be planted there. That bamboo will 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 come like instead of coming like this, the bamboo will be dumped instead of sugar cane, and that will convert into electricity for them. Because of shortage of time, I'm just pushing all this out, and it can produce electricity. It can make a very very viable uh, option for India. And uh, bio CNG, coal. I told you bio fuel. Electricity can be produced. Ethanol can be produced. I convert into international. What is the demand we need, we have? One third is six million ton of bamboo is needed for India to become a bio CNG completely from bamboo. It would be the same way for ethanol, completely from bamboo, one ninety million ton. For electricity, three fifty million ton. For uh, bio fuel, eight not four million ton. For coal, nine not four nine not eight million ton. Totally, two thousand four hundred million ton of bamboo is required. We may not do today. We might do after thirty years. Why? Right? But let's start it now. Now, if you are starting now, what is the area you need? Two hundred and forty lakh hectares. Today, bamboo sugarcane is grown only in fifty lakh hectares. Five point five lakh, five point five and five uh, fifty five lakh hectares is grown, and that is ruling the country. That sugar lobby is so strong; it's doing that. Look at the bamboo. Once it's going to come in a big way, bamboo. If not today, if not by me, if not by you, somebody else is going to do it. <clears throat> and let's start the work and do that. So bamboo is going to be in the next disruptive technology to dominate the future. <clears throat> That's what the the cell phone has come. Amazon has taken over. Uber has taken over. Apparently, in four five years, they spread everywhere. Like this, bamboo is going to be. Removing all this technology and it's going to be a disruptive technology to come in future. So in terms of money, income, uh, bamboo gives you one lakh rupee profit. Sugar cane gives you thirty to seven thousand rupee profit. Uh, cotton will give you fifty thousand rupees profit. Eucalyptus can give you thirty thousand rupees profit, but it has to be replanted after two three cycles. Bamboo need not be. Sugar cane every once in three years. Cotton every year. So with this, I just close. I've taken um, 10, 15 minutes more than what is allotted to me, and uh, I, I'm sure like a lot of people must be waiting with uh, bombarding with questions to me, and I would like to love to answer them in case if there is a time.